You're listening to Real Restaurant Radio, the show that inspires up-and-coming restaurant bar owners along with current operators to pursue their passion in the restaurant business. I am your host, Kosis Lozanis, and I'm joined, as always, with my good friend, Carrie Hodson. Let us guide you through the process of being a successful owner and teach you how to make an impact in today's culinary world. Carrie, do you know that my birthday is in like four days? What? I'm going to be 31 years old. Are you like promoting our podcast right now? No, I'm just adding to my story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess so. 31 years old, man. No, wait. Happy birthday. Wait, I'm going to be 32. Yeah, 32. I'm going to be 32. Yeah, you're one year younger than me. Dude. Until December. Dude, we're getting like, <laughs> we're getting old, man. I can't even keep up with my, my birthday anymore. 32. I opened up when I was 25 years old, man. That's awesome. Um, and everybody's like, oh, is the owner available? And now people are like knowing that I'm the owner. Like back like seven years ago, they were like, hey, kid, go get the owner. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, yeah, yes, sir. I'll, I'll get the owner right now. That's why I grew a beard, man. <laughs> oh, man. Are you one of those... Uh, Every time it's your birthday, you kind of like reflect on your life and think, oh, I need to, like, it's New Year's, like, oh, I need to blah, 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 to no. make my life better. This isn't what I thought of. I, I just try to have fun. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I usually just, every year I've used my mar- my restaurant as like a marketing tool to help drive traffic into the restaurant. So huh. I'm getting ready actually to do that right now. We're going to, I'm actually going to uh, leverage my child's birth because I'm actually having a baby today or tomorrow or the next day. Can I hold off till your birthday? Well, my <laughs> it's so funny. The due date is actually literally my birthday. Wow. August 21st. So by the time you guys are probably listening to this episode, I would have already had my baby, which we still don't even know the name of the baby yet. So huh. we got like some names to choose, but like we're battling on names. I, uh, uh, my sister used to do home health and feeding and speech, um, and she heard some of the weirdest names. Like um, someone put... I guess they didn't know what they were going to name their child, and they it, it said female, and they were like, oh, Famale. <laughs> Let's do I love that. It. I love and it. so her name's female. I'm like, wow. that sucks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> you want me to name your baby? Uh, what, do We can do an internet poll. Would like you do a, that? Yeah. <laughs> just sure. yeah, do, do that on, on the intrinsic uh, <laughs> social media. Just be like, hey, we're looking for a girl's name for a buddy. Help us out. Well, you know, your daughters now don't have... Um, like Greek names. Uh, Sophia oh, is yeah. is Greek. Isabella, I don't think is Greek. Hmm. But we're looking like Ariana. Um, I don't know. We're thinking of some different names. Um, Ella or she went my wife's like Eleanor, and I'm like I don't know. That sounds kind of I don't know. We'll, we'll figure. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna use the uh, my I always use my birthday as like, and you do the same thing, don't you? Do you use like our first day was my birthday, so so that's your anniversary. Right, your birthday, kind of all prohibition day, all, all of the things is all wrapped up into one huge. Right. So I try to use like my anniversary in May, as like one event. And then I try to use my birthday, come celebrate with the chef owner, mm-hmm. in August We're as like another event. Gonna try to do, um, since December is always hit or miss on the weather, and then that's our anniversary. So every other year is awesome. Um, there, it's always fun, but. You know, it's a blowout if the weather's nice. I know you've done some like crazy things on your anniversary, like going getting tarps and and <laughs> like and all the rain, things. Yeah, and all and these things. <laughs> it worked yeah. though. The place is always packed. Packing the bands in the tiny corners. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, it works. Um, we're, we we want to do a sour fest. So like eighteen sour beers that we make. So L- Lakewood did that a few years ago, didn't they? Have a bunch of sours, or they they kind of the ones that really pushed the whole sour thing, didn't they? They do. Um, let's get weird or something. Okay. And it's not just sours, but it's a bunch of weird beers. Mm-hmm. Martin House does a big sour fest. Okay. Um, and then we want to do like a big stout day in the spring. Make sure you uh, invite me to that one. Yeah, that's that's more your cup of tea. Yeah, I'm, 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 I appreciate a good sour. Right. But. Uh, they're really popular now with all this, the, 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 um, what kind of beer was the Uka Uka? Uh, I guess that was a sour, sour right? Sour IPA, yeah. Kind of like these, uh, what do you call the ones that are salty? Goza. Uh, Goze. Yeah. Mm. Those are really popular as well right mm. now. Cause they're approachable. I think at first people went like, oh, I want to see how sour I can get. And then now they're dialing it back. Same with IPAs. It was 
oh, let's get the most hops and the most bitter beer I can find. And now something more crushable, to, to prove more drinkable. how like craft beer I am. And then yeah, now people want like you know more hop flavor and subtleties and not a lot of bitterness. So yeah, I, I've noticed that too. There's been definitely a kind of like uh, a recall, shift. a shift. Yeah, definitely or like a it's almost a maturity thing. I don't know. It's like. Budweiser is actually not, you know, like they're like trying to do all these like Budweiser style ales, you know. So. <laughs> There's a, uh, there was a brewing competition, and the best of show, and it's blind tasting, right? Best of show was that Natty Light Strawberry or whatever that was. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's hilarious to me. <laughs> and like Paps is doing a coffee beer, uh, they're doing a seltzer. Like, okay. I don't, the big guys are getting into the weird. Stuff. When I even saw Budweiser actually repackage their bottles in, like in these old 1920s bottles, did, oh, you, yeah. did you see those? That's for like uh, the lunar landing. Okay. They're making the beer like it was then or something. I don't know. But again, that, I, I'm glad they're at least catching on and showing like the packaging is such a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this doesn't affect you, but new legislation came in to play with uh, beer to go. Or maybe yeah. that does affect you because maybe people are going to be buying other beer now instead of just yours. Um, right. So as it stands now, breweries can't sell beer to go. We're a brew pub, which is a retail tier. We can. Um, so they'll be able to. It's. I don't think it's going to hurt our business because no one was ever going coming to us to get their beer. Right? It's almost like a souvenir. Like I, I ate Intrinsic. I want the shirt and I want a, a can of beer to take home. Like, yeah, what we make, they don't have, and what they make, we don't have. If you're going to Liquid to buy their beer, then you're going to buy, you know. Exactly. Or, it, you could buy their beer at Kroger, too, so. Exactly. I, I get I, it. I think it's going to be positive because now I, I can quit explaining to people, yes, I promise you, you can buy beer to go <laughs> from us. I get it. I get so it. So then maybe, like, it's made the news. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's excited about it. Now it's just, okay, I'm not going to go to Walmart to buy my beer. I'm going to go to my local spot to buy beer, which is great. That's awesome. The other part Which we of saw it, that in uh, Salt Lake City when we were visiting. Yeah. Everywhere could, we went, just bought. Yeah. It seems like a no-brainer. There it's weird. You have to buy it on a different register. It's, <laughs> That's a whole nother. There's a, curtain, there's a curtain, so like yeah. underage people can't see consumption uh -huh. of alcohol. and nah, But it, that's Utah. <laughs> that's so funny. The other part is... Um, the uh, label approval, you know, every time you're like, oh, that's cool beer. Can I get that? I'm like, well, it hasn't gone for testing and label approval. Well, that's my whole problem, like, with me wanting to get, like, certain beers. Um, like, I'm like, hey, I reached out to probably 10 different breweries. I'm like, hey, can you brew me a Greek beer? I'm like, well, there's this whole process that goes into it. It's getting easier. Yeah, so um, that's awesome. Now, if you send your label to the feds uh, and get it approved through them, it's automatically approved through the state. Okay. Which makes sense. Like, why do we need to go through two processes to sure. do the same thing that you're not even... Uh, they're just, like, pushing paper. They have one person who does it, tests and... And what's your... And uh, label approval. They, what, what's the the cost for a brewery for label approval? The, the average cost? Um, I think it's, like, for us, it, you pay per package type, so it's, like... 12 ounce bottle, 16 ounce can, slim keg, 50 liter keg, half barrel keg. You pay for oh, every it's, it's single one. It's not just one. a. Um, so, and it's $25 it's not a brand? Per, per brand, per vessel. Oh, wow. So if you serve all those, then it's 100 bucks plus the. So standard, testing. it would be a keg and a, a can. From a lot two of different keg sizes. So we do... Oh, it's two different keg sizes. It's every size. Yeah. Wow. So, That's so weird. And then it's. There's different taxes for different abvs i think we're starting to get past all that though so that's that's insane you guys have done a lot the, the brewing community has done so much the past four years that i guess a lot of people don't realize it's all common sense stuff <laughs> which is not that common that's true <laughs> well, what are we talking about today my man what, what are we talking about today um forming a menu forming a menu mm -hmm. and i was taking some notes kind of just my thoughts down um and I guess there's two sections to it now that I look at it. There's menu items, like what is the dish? And then there's formatting the actual visual menu that someone orders from. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk about 
Um, let's talk about uh, the actual mini that people see because the other one's actually my weak point. Really? Yeah, it really <laughs> I is. Figured you'd be well, better at most. <laughs> well, you called me the other day and said, "What's the food cost on the uh, on the mi- on the uh, pasticcio?" And I was like. We do, you know, it's, it's, we sell it for a, yeah, right, right. a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like but there's some people that are anal that are like, I want to slice the, the lemon and like wait, like that lemon is 10 cents. If we give them like a wedge, you know, like we need to add 10 cents and add this much, which you got to do. I think it's really important to do. But at least do it at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then check up, update it. Sure. You have to know. How many? That's how, how many, you do your pricing. Of course. Uh, how many menus have you had since you opened up? Hmm. Like full blown core, core menus. Uh, well, three? just the one core menu because we're never going to stop serving barbecue, right? I mean, as far as revisions, um, we've added to it. We have our barbecue menu, our what we call our second lunch menu, which we've revised a little bit, and then we added our our um, bar menu and brunch menu, and then we added our brunch menu. Okay. Which we haven't really revised any of them. Like we've talked about the summer redoing our bar menu and taking some things off and putting some things on. Mm-hmm. But people are just getting used to what's on there and like I need to go through and look at how many you sold. How many of each item I've sold and then like maybe take out it's so hard I to can't do. add any more. I need exactly. to I need to wipe out something and if people get upset bring it back as a special or something. Or hopefully what you replace it with is similar enough but better or more exciting or just sure different yeah i I get uh i guess some of my servers i've had talks with my servers and i guess they have like parlayed that to the customers like some items that i'm getting ready to get rid of Mm -hmm. and the customer's like i heard you're getting rid of this item i'm like i mean i am but like we'll bring it back again as a special but Mm -hmm. like we have some new exciting things on the menu Mm -hmm. and that's a problem i think that a lot of restaurant owners run into is they want to add and add and add and add and I'm, I'm even at fault of that as myself. But um, we said it before on this podcast, like every like like guru, restaurant guru that you see on TV, the first thing to do is, is strip the menu down. Yeah, so I think it's good to put all of your ideas on a list, group them in categories, whether it's, you know, appetizers, entrees. Then I'd split entrees into like, you know, chicken dishes, beef dishes, vegetarian you know however sure it works with your cuisine um and then uh take a pen and mark out half of them i agree but i think also like you do want to like have some sometimes i'll go some places i'm like they don't have <clears throat> they don't have anything like i'm looking for like a, a shrimp dish like give me like i don't know like one seafood item on the menu or something like that obviously it like, depends on the on the concept a barbecue restaurant i don't expect to eat seafood at might, a barbecue, we restaurant. might do a salmon special or something. Some smoked salmon, but probably not on there all the time. Yeah, but yeah, I would, I would definitely say like a like, lighter, fresher option. So you can get a turkey salad. Okay, a turkey on a salad. Yeah, so you ha- just have those options. Some places that take you don't want to like strip yourself down to like we have a vegetarian flatbread. Okay, yeah, yeah, we have to, we have tons of vegeta- vegetarian options. Well, that vegan's open. really hard for us. So, <laughs> well, let's say that the cows eat only grass. Something like that. <laughs> our, our cows are vegan. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, the just... menu. Uh, and then, obviously, just uh, if you just, I think, definitely type in, like, menu psychology, menu design, menu layout. Color if, scheme. Exa- I think green stands for freshness. Uh, red stands for urgency. And these are all subconsciously uh, things that your mind tells you. I, think. I like black and white. but That's your whole thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, boxing things is going to draw your eye to those boxed items. Right. They always say like... Star, I, chef special. Yeah, for me, like for instance, like I will put like my... Some of my highest profit margin items, like I will box that up. Mm-hmm. And that way, like, hey, I want you... I want the guest to order these items. These are the premium items. Right? Yeah. Or that gives you that feel. I think the quickest way is probably to look at some of the best... Like just pay attention when you go out. Yeah. And look at the best examples. And the, I hate to say it, but the Chili's and Applebee's, like, they have... I think their menus are too big. Like, too big of floppy pages. Are they still doing that? I think so. Or have they gone to the one big sheet? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, have to, I haven't been there in a lot, long time. I like the one-page menus. And it can be front and back. but And don't 
oversize them. I mean, I guess if you're a fancy tablecloth steak restaurant, you can have those ridiculous oversized menus that you can't put down on the table without knocking over your glass of wine. Sure. Eh. <laughs> yeah, the, I think sizing. I mean, there's so many different things, so many variables. But the, the biggest thing is, is uh, I think also like the size of your letterings. Sure. So whenever what you, font you use, you don't want a bunch of different fonts. Keep it clean. Keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Print out, I guess, a few mock items. Get everything spell checked. Right. Get everything, all the punctuation and grammar and stuff. Because it's not cheap to print menus. It's not. So I would print like four or five times, like six or seven times. And let get, everybody read it. Let everybody read it. Last last call, and then send it off to the printer. Because once you print off, you want to get the economies of scale when you print. So right. you, you want to print, you know, it's like 10000 for $0.10 cents each, or you can do 5000 for $0.20 cents each, and it's like, well, it's half the cost. Well, that makes sense if you have... So there's the disposable menus, which ours, they get used four or five times, and then they get sauce on them, or... Yeah. Oh, I guess I was talking about to-go menus. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was talking they about to-go menus. colored on or crinkled. Someone sure. folds them in half, because I don't know why they do that. Uses them to level a table, spilled on, all kinds of things, right? Sure. Um, so if you're if they're like the ours where they're disposable or they're to go, then you print a ton. Um, if you, if you are planning on making a lot of changes to your menu though, then you're, you end up having to throw them all out. Exactly. So I, I don't like when I get a menu and like half the items are marked out with the That's pen so, and the price so is marked out and written in there. I don't, I don't like that. I had that problem with my, my draft beer cause I was always changing my draft beers and I'd print a new menu out every month from the new draft beer mm-hmm. lines but then, like, I'd print the menu off, and the next day a keg would blow. Right. So I literally just like said, "Ask your bartender for today's." We don't have rotation. Bar menu. We have those uh, those um, what do you call those things? Uh, the um, chalkboard. Yeah, it's on the wall. On the wall. We don't print them out. Does though. he have like take those off and like like get on a ladder? Yep. Like, oh, beer pop. Let me take that off. <laughs> get that off the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. We try to keep up with it, and it's online. If someone wants to look at our website or okay. pull up their Untapped or or whatever. So that, that that's definitely Ask your bartender. Menu design, menu design. Uh, I think size of of menu is kind of based on your type of service, right? If you're counter service, maybe something smaller because they're standing. Sure. If you're sitting down, maybe something a little bigger. Well, even on the on the counter service, I mean, now everybody's moving to these big LCD screens. That's true. Uh, I don't know. I've like, had, like McDonald's and analog. where you can have like the animation going across. I don't want to. Sc- I'm just anti-screen. Yeah, you don't, don't have any screens at all in your restaurant, do you? Projector screens, but they're off most of the time. Sure, but I mean that's just. I'm just letting like I'm everybody else know relax. there. Like everybody else out there, people are moving towards those. It's true. You and could companies that do those. LCD I want to unplug screens. though a little when I go eat. I got you. Yeah, Some a lot people, people like the too. high buzz and you know fast pace. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Payway has like those digital screens that are like mm-hmm. horizontal. R- right. Can you order from there? Vertical, another vertical. No, but McDonald's. I went to the McDonald's the other day, well, which I never go, the and they have the kiosk. You know where you just go right. to the to the screen, and actually that was actually really fun because I actually took my time and got to add tomatoes and add. I get to see my options of what I could add to a burger. Right. The burger ended up costing me like twenty dollars because I was like <laughs> extra onions at thirty nine cents each and extra tomatoes at fifteen cents each. Avocados, yeah, all the things. But I, I thought that was really cool, and I was thinking. You know what? These screens probably make them so much more money than the cashier because when you're in line, you feel nervous. You don't have time to like sit there and have like be in your own little world to like customize your order. It works for fast, quick service. I think so. And it at Payway, I don't think they have them at the tables. They're just no. That's their menu on the wall. Exactly. Digital, which I'm fine with digital menus. Mm -hmm. I just don't want it at my table. Oh, those little things that you see it like we can play the games on. Yeah, that's I agree. I agree. I just that's me. But I just meant like the uh, the big billboard, the big uh, LCD screens, um, kind of like that's at the counter. That, that's great for like changing menu items. Oh yeah, because you can literally just go in the back of house and just type it in. Because we've had some changes to our big menu, and it's like oh, I gotta reprint. That's yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it's expensive. And also, if you want to just change your pricing as well, you don't want to just like change your like the, the the cost of like a brisket sandwich from like one dollar to five dollars. You want to do a dollar, dollar twenty cents, dollar forty cents. So basically, make gradual changes. I was talking to somebody from Starbucks, and that's what they do in their lattes. It's like ten cents. Yeah, you'll never see the price increase because it's they always increasing it, 
at such small increments. It's like all of a sudden my cup of coffee is eight dollars. <laughs> like, what's going on here? But you never realize it though. You've just been mm-hmm. slowly paying your way up to that point. And I think for mom and pop restaurants, if we like, like that's where I'm going at right now is like I haven't changed my menu in so long. I was like, man, I need to like set my prices. Are you gonna do it with your anniversary? I don't know. Which I just gotta wait until see. Right now, uh, I'm actually working with a menu designer, and we're kind of laying everything out. And I want to take my time and make sure everything is like perfect. So we're still talking about layout, not menu items. Uh, layout. I already kind of narrowed down my menu items. Okay. So that yeah, I guess you got to do that first. We're just talking about the the actual format format of the menu. Are you gonna have multiple pages? And... I'm gonna do that. I'll stick with about uh, the, okay. the pages. For me, having the Greek cuisine, I think having the pictures really helps out a lot because people can actually see what they're ordering. Right. I order with my eyes there because I don't know how to say pesticio or... All the things. Octopodi or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you point. <laughs> exactly. One thing I've noticed um, at restaurants who have that similar problem is they put numbers by the menu items. Are you going to do that? That's like Chinese... Chinese restaurant. Is that too or like much? A, it's like a Mexican Chinese. Like I don't know. I feel like that doesn't. E seven. Can I get E seven, please? <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I think my personal opinion is kind of like I don't want to say trashy, but like it's like is it? It lowers it down. Hmm. I I think like a Chinese restaurant when I think that, which is well, not bad. Maybe thing. I don't order I something because mean... I don't know how to say it. I gotcha. And then it's it it could go either way. I if you have a really saying. great server who's like educates them in a the friendly way how to say it soup, instead of being soup. like it's lucky. Yeah. Like I gotcha, you know, sassy. Mm-hmm. You're dumb. I gotcha. You can't say <laughs> this, but I do reword but, like a lot of my like, a lot of my cuisine. Like instead of saying like spanakopita, I will say like spinach pie. Okay. What about? So I try to like give like them the, the phonetic spelling of it underneath. Oh, like that. That's something you could do. That'd yeah. Be a little more. Be fun. Classy than a number. Yeah, I I would do that over a number for sure. I think that's cool. Because you can be authentic, and then you can have the, mm-hmm. not the translation, but the the phonetics. How to say it. Yeah. And then they can learn on their own. I like that. And then they learn to, then they're more Greek. There right? you go. And they can go once a week, right? That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, so how, many, about, how many menus are you going to print? Uh, so I so I, I, ha- I try to print one. These are the f- ones that you use over and over and over. One per chair. I try, I, try to, I try to have one per chair. Okay. So I try to print like, uh, or one per two chairs, I guess. I have about 40, 40 menus. The um, And I do run out of menus sometimes, like where it just happens to be where every single person in the restaurant is like ordering all at the same time. Mm. And I'm like, we're running out of menus. Like, we'll have them share. The I think the industry... Standard, it's seventy five percent of your capacity. So yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of I was like one per person, but two. Yeah, exactly. So seventy five. So right in between there, somewhere in the middle there. Um, and then I guess it's the it's fifty percent of your capacity for dessert menus, but your dessert menus on your main menu. And that works out, right? Yeah, we just flip to the to the back page type right. thing and and have them look I think at that. That's better to have. Well, I don't know. Do they keep the menu the whole time? They don't, but what we'll do is bring it back, and the way that the menu folds up, we can actually fold it all the way back on itself. And like, here's also our dessert menu. Do you? But say... I like them to see the desserts, like when they order the the menu, and mm. see that like when they sit down. I want them to see the dessert options sure. before they order their main course, so they can just see, that, oh wow, they have all these desserts. That way, they're already thinking about dessert already. We're selling, I think, five times the amount of dessert we used to. All because of that display case. Just because the display case, and they are getting it counter service right they're getting their cheesecake while they're hungry and they're ordering their food and they're going to the table with both of it and it's they can take it to go like it's already in a package they're already filled up right that's awesome man congratulations that's the same thing that i did with my restaurant when i opened up that um dessert display you can see it right there it's just right there What's in the case my biggest you got my biggest thing for me was building the bar and then building the dessert case next to the bar uh especially when it comes to to-go to go orders because people would just like order to go and they get their food and they'd leave. Now it's like they sit at the bar, they order a beer, order their food, order their food, and then they add a dessert. Yeah, they get curious. It's like the candy bars at the checkout line at the grocery store, right? Is that is that why they do that? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think it's one menu, one wine or beer menu per table. 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Which I have those big black ones um, that we have on the tables that I, that I got like, customized, like built. The, the TP one or whatever, the uh, tents? They're actually like actual... Um, oh, they stay there. They stay there. Okay, mm -hmm. right, right. And my cocktail, my cocktail beer and wine list. But I see a lot of restaurants are adding their... When you open up the, the main menu, that first page is actually the cocktails, mm -hmm. beers, and wines. <clears throat> so it's like, order me, mm -hmm. which I think that's a great model because like, so a lot of people don't open up those little um, cocktail uh, books that you have on your table already. They open up just their main course. Hmm. So that might be... I always do. <laughs> I always do too. But somebody who's on the fence about ordering a cocktail... My wife and I fight over who gets to look at the, <laughs> at the cocktail menu first. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but so, yeah, I, I think that's cool, kind of a cool thing is, is having the cocktails on that first page. Yeah. And then appetizers on the next page. Right. It kind of takes them through the ordering process. It's like you need to order a cocktail. First, like slow down. Yeah. I know you're hungry, but let's do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Get your drink. One cocktail. Right. Uh, uh, and so then, how do you decide which items get photos? What I guess it's a battle between what's the most profitable and what I want people to order because I think whatever the science is like people order so many more times the uh photoed item hmm. so if you have so you're not gonna not do photo a item. photo of your your salmon no you're gonna do it and i have a beautiful photo of my salmon too on my current menu and i regret it because everybody orders the salmon at eight dollars a pound right so I, I, it's a battle between what is uh the most profitable and then also what is the most photogenic because you know certain foods don't look that great in photos greek food's beautiful <laughs> greek food's colorful yeah like the proteins are kind of separated out you know what i mean I, it looks it looks good but yeah. there are certain items like refried beans that aren't really photogenic you, you can't take a good photo of refried beans you know mm, cheese on top I don't so know. something yeah. right but uh some queso fresco if the photo's not good and you don't have a a photographer which we both dived into i think then don't don't put it on the menu just don't yeah i agree i agree and i've, I've had some bad photos on the menus before and i kind of were like uh time to get new menus yeah exactly. you grow and evolve but just don't <laughs> i agree um how about descriptions like how deep into a description do you go i'm actually uh well, you, you talk a little bit i talk too much you asked so you answer that you're the big menu designer guy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put really descriptive words on my menu just because, like, I was afraid that people didn't know what they wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna scale back. Start this time. cutting out words that don't matter. Like, start. Yeah, I'm just gonna write. I think I might do the um, almost like a forward slash type thing and just have like like six or seven names of just the key ingredients that you use to make that dish. You can do that. We do. We do that. For, like, okay, brisket flatbread. We don't say. Well, it's a, uh, you know, yeah, leave all that Some stuff. people like, will write a whole paragraph, which I've, I've made those sentences, no, too. I've, I've like written whole sentences on, on dishes, you sauce, know. Sauce, brisket, bell peppers, onions, cheese. Like, that's what's in it. It's almost like the label on the back of a, a chip bag or whatever. Again, I think that we have to realize that we live in this, like, go, 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 low attention span world. Like, I don't need to hear. I don't need to hear it was... Uh, a dish that was formulated in your grandmother's kitchen yeah, that the 900 the years ago. The noodles were boiled. Yeah. Well, duh. I mean, it's pasta. Like, I just <laughs> need, like, in this short attention span, because people are like mice right now like with their attention spans. But you can still be fun with it. I've seen people, you know, say something. I can't think of, like, a great example right now, of course. But, but as like, long as it's, like, something short, though. It Like, so, pasticcio, maybe it's, like, it's it's lasagna for Greeks. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, something or, like, like that. Something catchy or... But just lengthy descriptions, I think, is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Leave that to your server for to describe, it, maybe whatever it's at exactly, or your social media outlet, or I agree, right? So hmm. keep it simple, okay. And then font, I guess we I said don't use a ton of fonts. Just something simple you can read. Some people go crazy, and and I even had um, a little designer help me out, and they brought me back something. I was like, I can't read any of this, right? So. Especially like with the Greek fonts and stuff, like you, maybe I could use it for like my headers, but like the actual like items on there, mm -hmm. it needs to be like Times New Roman. Like, give me something that I can read. We can do what you did uh, when you were formulating your brunch menu: is look at some really great examples around the nation, and you know, pick and choose an exciting menu items, and then figure out. Um, we should know how to cook them, of course, and then figure out your food costing so you can price it out. And if it's pr over, you know, priced outside of your 
your kind of concept, then you probably shouldn't be cooking that. I agree. It's crazy when I was doing that, I was formulating my brunch menu. I think I told you this already. I went to Chicago. I went to San Francisco. I went to Long, I- Long Island. And I was looking at all the best brunches. I just typed in brunch and categorized them from like number one to number 10. But then I was like, these look all amazing. Like, I love all these brunch items. Like We're going to definitely do this. I go over to the website because you can click on a link to the website, go to their menu, and I'm like, deep fried cream brulee French toast, $27. So I'm like, oh, must be nice. Right. Wow. Too but, <laughs> but then I'm sure like their overhead's crazy. They're like, you know, California with the pay servers, like $11 an hour plus right. tips. Like there's it's so many different models and so many different vari- variables when it comes to menu pricing. Sure. So it's not just the food cost, which I think the food cost is definitely like a big um, center portion of the menu item cost. But you have to look at all the other expenses as well. Right. Well, you take your food costs and your margin and that that number, whatever you need it to be, determines your final price for everything. And um, I mean, obviously, if we're going to dive into food costs and stuff like that, uh, I think between 20 to, to th- 20 between 15 and, and 40% is kind of like all over the place. So 25% is usually that sweet number. Yeah, nothing I have is 25 or lower. Is it all is <laughs> it all higher. over that? Yeah. 30%. We're such a high protein. But what about your uh, your beer your beer though? Okay. That's way better. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh yeah, no, I understand though the high protein on your on your food cost. Right. And your food cost is pretty pretty cheap like your standard standard meal there is um, 12, 12 f- you can get full for eight bucks. You can um, have a cool experience, or you know, two meats, two sides for fourteen fifty. You know, okay, yeah, that's come to happy hour, get a five dollar sandwich. That that's the thing is when so when you start also when you're building your menu, I'm glad you you mentioned that is like factor in those those happy hour prices and those discounts. Like we mm-hmm. do the free birthday meals. So when you say, oh my my food cost is actually you know. It is twenty eight per they're thirty percent. By the time you scale it back and, and get hit with all the happy hour stuff and all the promotional stuff, now your food cost rises. But people buy more when they're when it's cheaper, so they'll stay for two drinks because they saved a dollar on their sandwich. So it does balance. So out. Th- yeah, it's that loss leader. But if, uh, but as far as just the food cost, just know that that's gonna that's oh, gonna occur. absolutely yeah yeah. So when you say oh my food cost is this amount, so maybe I'm trying to say is like make your food. So if seventeen dollars make it maybe seventeen eighty nine, and that extra eighty nine cents is gonna help you uh, a little more wiggle room. Yeah. So when you do discount, you know, when you send out that coupon for buy one entree, get one half off. Right. It's gonna help compensate for that mm-hmm. for that loss. Hmm. Good point. Well, we have so we had talked about cutting your menu in half, and now that I'm thinking about it, we have a barbecue menu, a second lunch menu, a bar menu, and a brunch menu. But they're only available at certain times. Brunch only Sunday morning for four hours. And that's the newest, hottest thing is brunch. Um, second lunch is only a second lunch and bar menu are only after three o'clock. So I don't know. I feel like what do you think about that? Is I like it too it. confusing. Or no, because we get people coming in and say, "Hey, can I get these pretzels or nachos?" At, that, uh, it's almost like a happy at, happy at hour. Noon and they and we say we don't do that till three, and some people get upset. I mean, I would probably still serve them if I had the means to, but I definitely could see where like slippery slope. We're not, though we're not set up. Well, for that. last time they did, they made me nachos at noon. I get you. I don't you know. know what? If it's just a few little things, like let them come in. Like that's just our. That's just mm-hmm. how it is. I think they'll understand. Try to sell them on what you have that then, and I mean, a lot of places I feel like have a dinner and lunch menu separate. Yeah, I don't know. They do. They mm-hmm. do. I mean, I do. Okay. Um, and you don't serve brunch every day. I think yeah, people sh- people get that. But I mean, I had like, ironically, I had this guy come in at 11 o'clock. I had nothing else to do. I'm like, I'll fry you some eggs. This is some, t- some old man's like, can I get two uh, two eggs with bacon? But I mean, I guess you have to, uh, it depends on where you're at in your life. So mm-hmm. like if you've got a waiting list, you can turn people down. But like when you're first starting your restaurant, like I'm a big believer in just like make it happen, make for it them. happen for the guests. Like if, if you mm-hmm. can. I mean, if you're at a point in your life where, you know, you're making so much money, you can tell people, I'm sorry, turn people down. There's a balance. You got to set the tone. Though. Yeah. Just let them know, like, hey, I don't, we don't do breakfast today, but for you, my friend, I'm going to make you whatever you want. Right. But you don't know? expect this from every, 
every time or exactly just let them know okay so, um but th- that's building relationships that's a whole nother episode i think so i think we've gone over bro oh no we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't even do a review we didn't okay we'll end it with a review four stars this user only left a rating <laughs> okay all right all right <laughs> you get a lot of that and you kind of don't know what to do with them but thanks uh, let's see. I here. think Google's pushing a lot more. Have you gotten those notifications where it says you've been to this place? Can you answer questions about this place? Yes, yes, yes. Even on a is that an iPhone? iPhone. Oh, okay. Even yeah. on an iPhone, mm-hmm. you're getting that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I get those too. All right, so I got one here from. We discovered Opa on Uber Eats, and we absolutely fell in love with their food. We finally decided to go in for brunch on Father's Day. Uh, we finally, I said that already, <laughs> I love my eggs Benedict. However, my husband did not like what he ordered, nor did my daughter. This was not the restaurant restaurant's fault, though. They did not really read the description well. We love Opa, but I think we will stick to the dinner menu. Huh. Okay. I thought that was kind of like a good, That's honest fair. review. Like, it's cool they discovered you on Uber Eats. And I love that fact that they kind of own the fact that they just didn't read the menu description. Right. They got what they, they got exactly what they wanted or ordered. Yeah. It just wasn't what they wanted. You know, I did that too. I was, I was actually speaking of Payway. I ordered like this like spicy dish. Like I'm not enjoying this at all. Right. But it had a big flame mark next to the the menu. I said this is extra extra spicy. Right. Like my mouth was on fire. I was like, I can't even taste the flavor. It's just all it tastes is heat. Yeah. I've had I've had order envy before too. It's like. But you ordered, you know, and that's. I mean, I've ordered a beer like that before. I've ordered a beer like. Yeah, I should be like a beer flight because now I'm stuck with this full pint and I don't even want this beer. Mm-hmm. But I'll drink it because I ordered it. Right. right. Thing. So I'm. But I'm glad that they owned it. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Not bad. Well. Until next time. Anything else, Gary? No. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you guys. What's next episode? We'll talk about that. You guys stay tuned. Writing a business plan. Oh, no. Okay, Carrie's going to talk the entire time <laughs> on the next episode. Thank you guys for listening. If you are in the DFW area and have not checked out a restaurant, which I don't know why you haven't, but check out Carrie Hodson. He is the owner of one of the best barbecue brew pub restaurants in DFW called Intrinsic. Intrinsic. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a great week. Cheers.